and Stonkey at Manchester in particular for our A-level workshop today. Now the aim of today is to share with you the substantive changes of the new A-level. So they are sorry, I can't it. Um, so they are carbon cycling, uh, space and place theory or changing places as explained in the syllabus, and our land geographies as well. Today is not a formal conference, it's very much supposed to be an informal, relaxed, open workshop. Um, there'll be team coffee available all day, please feel free to come and go, grab yourself a brew, we we'll bring some sessions, and similarly ask as many questions as you'd like today, quick clarification, so on and so forth. Um, the original plan for today was to run parallel <coughs> workshops, so we went to one of the sessions. But feedback from teachers and indeed the bookings themselves suggests that we wanted to go to many. So what I've done is I've redid the day. Um, we're going to be a little bit tight this morning, but if you'd like to, you can go to at least two or three sessions. So in your pack is a timetable for this morning, which looks like it is, or a timetable for all day. I think you can just about read that. More or less. More or less. Um, so it's entirely up to you. Don't worry about which sessions you signed up for either. Just feel free to go and join a session of your interest. Um, this morning, after... Professor Martin Evans, who led the change of the consultancy to the Royal Geographical Society about the syllabus, has explained to you the big changes, but also where that's situated within the broader geographical landscape. We will move into our session. So Gareth, who's with us, is going to run a session on the, the carbon cycle. If you'd like to join that session, please feel free. If you'd like to take the opportunity to have another cup of tea and just sit and ground yourself, you're more than welcome. Alternatively, our ambassadors are going to run a tour of geographies. If you'd like to go and see our laboratories, for example, have a wander around campus, please feel free. Just go and meet them at the registration desk where you signed in this morning. And then um, after replenishment of coffee, you can then join either the Space and Place Theory session or um, join Abby for the Arab Lands Geography session. So entirely up to you. Please feel free to come and go to those sessions. <coughs> okay. Uh, lunch will be ready for us at around half past one. And then this afternoon we're going to go into parallel sessions. So this is where I'm going to hand over to our teachers just to give you some time to talk through the ideas of the morning and think about how you can translate those to a classroom setting. So many thanks to Helen, who I saw just a moment ago, and to Miranda, who are going to facilitate those sessions for us. So this aims to be a very relaxed, informal workshop, opportunities to share ideas, talk through these theories and think about how you would translate them to the classroom. Okay. Um, a few points of, oh and sorry, most importantly, there will be a drinks reception if you fancy a glass of wine at the end of the day as well. I think geographers are, are often quite willing to have a glass of wine on a Friday, so we'll, we will climb into the uh, drinks reception at <coughs> 3 o'clock. A few points, practicalities. We're going to be in this building all day today, so our lecture theatre is we're using this one, the one across the way. Um, the te our flat teaching rooms are also on the ground floor of this building, so we'll stay here for today. Uh, we've had our fire alarm test this morning, so if the fire alarm does go off, then it's for real, and we will usher you all outside, and our ambassadors will take over. Our ambassadors are with us all day, so they signed you in this morning. Any questions at all, please feel free. Uh, they'll direct you to the toilets, the different rooms, for example, making sure that your caffeine levels are kept as high as humanly possible, um, and they're here to assist us. At the break as well, Discover Education are going to join us. They asked if they could come in, they've got a few resources that they'd like to share, so they'll be out in the um, main foyer. I think that's, that's absolutely everything. A um, couple of other little points. <coughs> in your packs should be everything. So there's hard copies of all the slides from all of the sessions. We are also going to podcast the lectures today, and they'll be available to download after our workshop. I'm just give me a couple of days to get them online for you. They'll be available from the, dra the address that's there. That's also written on your packs, in your packs for you. And um, the hard, sorry, the, the electronic version of the slides will be available there with the, the lectures to download. So please feel free to access those after the event. We would really appreciate some feedback if possible. Um, if you are social media people, please feel free to tweet. There's a feedback form in your folder. We were able to offer the session today free of charge thanks to generous funding from a couple of different organisations. So any kind of feedback that I can use would be hugely appreciated. And there's a box for feedback which is on the registration desk just as you came in. Um, I think that's more or less it. My only other couple of points were that, um, if you don't mind, if you don't mind, I'm going to break my foot. 
Uh, we'd like to take a couple of photographs of today, again, just for our social media. And if you'd rather not be in photographs, please just let us know, and I will make sure that you're not, face you're not featured there. Similarly, you've very kindly given your, uh, your email addresses as you signed up for our session today. I'm hoping that today is the start of building much closer relationships between Geography at Manchester and A-level geography teachers. And I'd like to keep you informed of any events that we're having, seminars, any useful resources. If you'd rather not be bugged by me, um, or indeed Geography at Manchester, please just let me know and I can take you off that email list. Otherwise, I'll assume that by giving us your email, you're quite happy to be part of that. Um, and also a couple of thank yous. So the North West Geography Consortium helped us set up today. They helped us choose today. And they gave me lots of great ideas about how to frame the day. To our, our staff who are going to run the sessions and to Helen and to Narinda who are going to facilitate this afternoon. Um, our ambassadors, Emily who's helped set me up and of course you guys are joining us today. I hope you find it useful. I hope you get something out today, even if it is just a decent lunch and a glass of wine at the end. And a break from marking. <coughs> Come and join us folks. It's, uh, it's never bad. So if I can hand you over, I'm not going to fit through there. <laughs> I used to fit through there. If I hand you over to Martin. Thanks, Jen. Good morning, everybody. Um, I thought it might be useful just to <coughs> kind of give you a brief sense of how we got to here. I know these things sometimes feel like they've kind of descended from outer space and they hit you as teachers regularly and, and, and often um, it's sort of uninvited. Um, but it might just be helpful, I think, just to give you a sense of, of how we got from, from uh, there to here. So th the initial kind of impetus behind A-Level Reform um, came from uh, Michael Gove, who asked um, <coughs> the Vice-Chancellor of the University of Lancaster to produce a report on the suitability of A-Levels, current A-Levels, for, um, and, and it's quite narrowly framed as uh, as preparation for uh, entry to leading universities. So Mark Smith um, took together a report on all of the A-levels, which basically said that most of them were okay and needed a bit of tweaking, but identified <coughs> maths and modern languages as being uh, needing a, a more kind of fundamental look at. And that went out for public consultation in the autumn of 2013. And the RGS uh, and the GA, amongst others, put in very strong... Uh, responsive to that consultation, saying that they thought that geography, as framed, um, particularly in the light of the new GCSEs, wasn't really offering anything very interesting or much in way of progression from the new GCSE, and they thought it ought to be hauled into this process. Um, so it was, and the process um, that, that came out of that was DFE asked ALCAB, which effectively was a, an arm of the Russell Group of Universities, um, that's the A-level content advisory board to report on those three subjects. So there was a geography panel convened, um, which wrote a report on what they thought um, should be in a new geography A-level. That that was about June of 2014. Um, that was then translated into a, a criteria document, which is what DFE, well, sorry, what Ofqual use. You know, they, they sit with the, the specifications from boards in one hand and the criteria in the other, and they tick off to make sure it's doing all the things that, that they think it should. Um, so that was produced in July 2014. It went into <coughs> public consultation. It was published uh, just before Christmas 2014. Uh, and there was then a period for the, the boards to put their specs together. Um, they went to Ofqual in the, the summer of last year. Um, they were with Ofqual for quite a long time, they went backwards and forwards a few times, but they have all now finally been approved for teaching in September of 2016. So I think everybody that was involved at any stage of this process, and not least you, um, would say that not enough time was allowed for each of these um, phases, but nevertheless it's still kind of over three years from the beginning of it to the end of it. So it's been quite long drawn out. Um, I was involved as part of ALCAP. I chaired the Geography ALCAP panel. And that was a dozen people. It included um, the director of the RGS, chief executive of the Geographical Association. We had a teacher, and then we had a series of academics, human and physical geographers from a range of, of different types of universities. And again, we had a very narrow remit. 
from DfE. We were supposed to be producing a recommendations on a, an A-level content that was suitable for pre um, preparation for entry to leading universities. We immediately took the view that that was a, an incredibly narrow definition of what A-level was supposed to do. And so we started off by actually trying to scope out what an A-level should look like and trying to talk to the geographical community about that. So we talked to heads of university geography departments, the GA and the RGS did a lot of work facilitating consultation with teachers through the GA conference and some focus groups and so on. And I've just pulled together some of kind of what we got back in terms of the kind of key ideas that came through. And actually, in some ways, this was very reassuring <coughs> because there, is a, there was a very strong consensus around a core of what we all think geography looks like. And things that sat in there were, were field work, people and environment, there were concerns about rigour in physical geography, there was an emphasis on the importance of a balance of human and physical geography. Um, there was consensus that some kind of independent research part of the A-level would be a good thing. And then there were things that, that, that differed. Um, and teachers, unsurprisingly, given their expertise, identified uh, a series of kind of practical and pedagogic concerns around progression, around skills and embedding skills, around making sure that the A-levels were suitable for a diversity of learners. Um, academics identified um, some things like uh, numeracy, uh, GIS, big data, spatial data. And then there was this kind of interesting one, which was modern geography. Um, and on the teacher side, contemporary and engaging geography. And those actually meant, they sound very similar, but they meant slightly different things. So contemporary and engaging meant this is the stuff that you read about in the newspapers every day. This is, this is you know, this is real world um, geography that, that students will be interested in. And modern geography on the academic side meant bringing some of the kind of developments of the last kind of 30 years in the discipline that hadn't seeped into A-level, um, into the A-level. So the panel on the basis of that identified, kind of produced a series of principles, and this is not all of them, they're all in the LCAP report if you wanted to read them, but effectively there were some things that we thought were really important here. So a challenging and engaging content suitable preparation for further study in geography, that was what we were kind of asked to do. But we also identified that there needs to be progression here from GCSE, both um, thematic but also conceptual. The balance of human and physical geography that everybody identified, the people and environment topics being an important part of that. But, but the idea that, that people and environment topics draw on an understanding of human and physical geography, they don't kind of stand on their own. They're, they're supported by an understanding of human processes and physical processes. So we, we recognise that um, A-level couldn't cover everything, but, but, but what it did cover, it had to do with an appropriate depth of study. Um, we recognise the importance of field work. Everybody said that field work was important and that it was best assessed not by an examination. We wanted to make sure that this was relevant and accessible. And importantly, we wanted to try and produce something that was evolution, not revolution, kind of recognising the pressures that, that are on all of you. Um, you know, clearly there was going to be some change here, but it, it needed not to be throwing out all that was good about existing A-levels. So the way those kind of recommendations came through were around, um, largely around a core content. So Alcab recommended a core content of 60% of the A-level. And that was four themes and uh, the field work and skills. <coughs> and the reason for, I, for going for that kind of level of core content was because that's the only way that, that, that these recommendations could bring new material into the specifications. Um, if, it, if it was identified as core, it would have to be there. But equally, we didn't want 100% core because there's loads of good stuff in existing A-levels. Um, there needs to be choice because you know, you all have different skill sets and different departments and different teachers want to be able to choose uh, material that, that kind of plays to their strengths. Um, and we didn't want to throw out the best of what was already there in A-level. So 40% of what was left um, is selected by the awarding bodies. And the hope also there was that that would kind of give some differentiation between the boards. Um, I mean, I'm sure you've all spent some time pouring over the various draft specs and you probably agree with me that actually it hasn't produced a great deal of diversity between the boards because they've held on to much the same material in, in, the, um, in the optional content but, but that was kind of the thinking behind it. 
So uh, that's, a, that's a wordle of the, the DfE document. Um, see, some of the important things here, places, um, people, field work, global, processes. These are some of the kind of key themes that, that are coming through uh, that document. Um, and importantly, as well as the kind of thematic focus, um, the different kind of sections of core content, there are these concepts um, and the concepts are identified as, you know, if you want, these are, sometimes it's called thinking like a geographer, isn't it? You know, they're almost like an attempt, we, we didn't frame it in this way when we were talking about it, but looking back on it, what we were trying to do was identify some words and concepts that, that encapsulated thinking like a geographer that ran across all of the themes. So again, we didn't frame it like this, but though these concepts bear some relation, I think, to the kind of notion of synopticity that was there in the, in the previous available specifications. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about this because you all know this because I'm sure you've been looking at specs, but um, you know, four core themes, global system, glo global governance, um, particularly relevant this morning, I suspect. Um, but, what, but a thing that actually does draw on quite a lot of what was pre-existing within, within specs. So uh, material related development and migration and trade was all there in previous A-levels. Some of the stuff around um, sovereignty, uh, and the global commons and global governments is, is a bit newer. Changing place, changing places is quite new. And this was really one of the places where you know, there's been substantial change in kind of geography and higher education over the last 30 years or so, since about probably the early 90s. So cultural and social geography has become, and, and the sort of um, qualitative methodologies that go along with that have become a really core part of human geography. And it was something that hadn't only in kind of fairly small ways had seeped into the A-level um, curriculum to date. Now, nobody's suggesting that, that A-level specifications should follow every fad and fashion within geography and higher education because there are lots of those and lots of them don't last. But you know, this is a shift that's been around for 30 years um, and probably needed to make its way into the curriculum. So, so that's why that is there. Um, so ideas around um, places, how places are constituted, um, both economically and socially and politically, how they're represented, how people experience places. Landscape systems, that's very familiar. Um, that was in much of the, the, the pre-existing specs. Um, the thing that you probably leaps out at you from that is, oh, where are the rivers? Um, so we've got dry lands, we've got glacial landscapes, we've got coastal landscapes, um, not rivers. And that was actually a conscious choice. Um, and that really was this issue around progression. The advice that we were getting was that there were lots of rivers in key stages two, three, and four, um, and that perhaps it didn't need to be there um, at A level. Now, as a fluvial geomorphologist, I wasn't entirely comfortable with that. Um, we did manage to save something around kind of um, catchment hydrology and water cycling in the next topic. Um, but I did actually become convinced of it, stood on a hill with a first year student shortly after we did this work, and she said to me, I love physical geography, but all we ever study is rivers. So I, I did feel a little better about it at that point. Um, and then the final physical core topic, water and carbon cycles, that, that Gareth's going to talk about later on. Um, <coughs> you know, the importance of cycles as ways of thinking about um, the world, ways that kind of big global models understand global environmental issues, but also cycles as really important ways that we can link across scales. So, you know, if you think about the hydrological cycle, it's hard for a student to study the hydrological cycle. It's very easy for them to nip out into the playground with some infiltration rings and study the relative infiltration of grass and tarmac. And that has all sorts of implications in terms of understanding urban runoff and so on. So cy understanding cycles gives you this potential to link you know, very small scale processes to, to the bigger, wider understanding of, of the kind of big environmental issues that we face. So that's, that's what it looks like. Um, what are the implications of this? Now you can probably tell me these better than I can tell you, but you know, just thinking about some of what, what changes here. Um, hopefully we now have 
better progression from 11 all the way through 19. Better defined um, thematically, it's not all rivers, <coughs> and, and, and hopefully um, conceptually <coughs> as well. And that's something that in higher education we need to kind of take note of and make sure that we continue that through kind of first year um, education. Um, it's an updated <coughs> curriculum. Um, that through this process, there's been some re-engagement of academic geography with the exam process. Um, you know, 40 years ago, it was largely run by academics. 10 years ago, it was almost entirely run by teachers. Um, you know, probably there's a middle ground there somewhere, and, and this might have shifted us back towards it. Um, but the formal kind of link that, that ALCAP created um, is now on ice. ALCAP no longer exists. It's deemed to have done its job um, and, uh, and, and is not being kind of supported to kind of review this, this curriculum. So it's really now down to us. It's down to the geographical community to kind of take hold of this and own it uh, and make it happen in the way that we want to. Um, and hopefully, as Jen said earlier, you know, through that, I know lots of universities are doing this sort of thing, and it is an opportunity for us to perhaps develop slightly better links between A-level teachers and university departments. Implications in schools, hopefully stronger progression. Changing places is new, clearly. Um, doesn't apply to very many people in the room by the looks of it, but if you were kind of read a geography degree before about 1990, it probably comes as a bit of a, a shock to you. Um, carbon cycles, again, um, might be new. So there are clearly challenges around kind of making sure that, that uh, everybody's in a position to deliver this material. Um, there are challenges, I think, around the interpretation of big data and spatial data that the exam boards are working through, and, and also particularly how to manage the individual investigations and the field work. There are implications for us as well. Um, the more unified core was something that, that higher education has been calling for, because if you've got a room like this and you've got 200 students in it, it's really nice to know in the, in the first year what, what they know and what, what they don't know, or at least have some core of knowledge that they all know. Because at the moment that really doesn't happen. Um, you have to start everything from, from scratch because there's such kind of diversity between um, what students have studied. We need to be aware of the fact that there's less rivers and more carbon cycle, that students will have a stronger grounding in kind of social and cultural approaches. Um, it's great that they will all have some field experience and through the independent study, um, some more experience of, of working independently. What does it mean for discipline? This comes back to, to all of us. Um, you know, the core, one of the core recommendations of ALCAB was that the government should fund um, an extensive programme of CPD um, to make it as easy as possible uh, for you to implement this in September. Inevitably, that didn't happen. So uh, this, is, this is where it comes down to all of us. It comes down to the Royal Geographical Society, to the Geographical Association, to teachers, to university departments, to the various consultants that are floating around the country, to the publishers, to the exam boards, to work together to make sure that, that we move from um, these dry documents to a kind of living A-level. And um, I've been introduced to this, you're probably all familiar with this, but I've been introduced to this notion of practical curriculum making. And I think you know, that's what we're doing here. Um, it's quite difficult to transmit the spirit and intent of what was originally the ALCAP report, which is quite a long document, it's quite a discursive document, and says you know, these are important things for geography and geographers to get into the new A-level. Through a much shorter DFE document, where only certain language was allowed to be used, because Ofqual would say, no, we can't regulate against that language, which I think means tick a box against, you know, is this in or out of, of a particular specification. Um, and then through the translation from that criteria document into the specifications, and then the specifications are quite sparse documents that are filled out, you know, as you know, by textbooks on one level have almost become like extended specifications that where you go to find out what the exam board is really thinking about this topic rather than the few words that are in the specification. But also what you do um, feeds into this because some of this is new for chief examiners as well. You know, chief examiners are mostly trained, not all of them, but many of them are trained pre-1990. So they're getting their heads around this stuff as well. So the type of you know, materials that you develop and deliver in the classroom and that, that come through in the first 
phase of examination, I think, will influence you know, the way these, these specifications evolve and the types of questions that are set down the line. So I think we are all involved in a process here. Um, and it really is an opportunity for the geographical community to, to own these exams and to make them work for us to do uh, what we want. So make them your A-levels. Well, I've done a lot of talks like this over the last little while, um, and I've sort of identified the three stages of A-level reform for, for, for teachers, grown inevitably, oh my God, it's changing again. We haven't got time. The GCSE is changing at the same time. It's totally unreasonable, which it clearly is. Um, terror uh, engendered by that, plus, plus new topics that may not entirely be familiar. But um, quite a lot of people, I think, coming out the other side of that as well and getting quite excited about it, and I hope that you will too. You know, there is new material in here. We're all geographers. We're all kind of excited by geography and, and, and the delivery of interesting geographical material. I hope you'll find some of that um, in this new spec, and I hope that, that what Abby and Gareth and Chris talk about later will kind of help take you somewhere down that road. There are also, um, you know, this, this community effort is ongoing, and it's pretty intense right now, so there's a lot of material beginning to appear. There are a lot of resources um, around about. I don't know whether anybody saw tweets yesterday, but Alistair Owens is... Um, top spec geography, Alistair Owens and Simon Oakes and somebody else who I can't remember have written one of the GA top spec geography um, guides around changing places which was published yesterday. Um, I'm sure that will be great, worth getting hold of I think. Um, on the GA and R so the GA and RGS are doing lots and on the RGS website at that link um, there are a, a series of outlines of the core topics um, sort of three or 4,000 words introducing uh, the core topics, which might be useful. Um, you'd expect me to plug Geography Review magazine. The Geography Review is going to be focusing quite explicitly on a lot of new um, spec material over the next year to 18 months. Um, Teaching Geography, I know, um, is developing a series of articles. Um, there's lots of commercial CPD going on. The publishers um, are doing that. Lots of the consultants and trainers are offering that. The Field Studies Council are. Um, there are lots of university CPD events like this going on. Um, the exam boards obviously are beginning to pump out um, uh, textbooks and supporting materials. <coughs> um, so there's lots out there. Um, it's in slightly diverse locations, so you know, do go looking for it. But um, the Google search for asking the GA and asking the RGS or following some of these links will will take you to some material that hopefully will be useful. So, to wrap up, um, if we're going to make a success of this, it's down to all of us. Um, all parts of the geographical community are going to have to feed into this. Um, a lot of that is going to be coordinated by the RGS and the GA, and we're very lucky to have two kind of disciplinary um, institutions that are so active in, in supporting us in this kind of work. Um, new A-levels include new content, but content I hope that is kind of relevant to the changing world and relevant to some of the things that geography and geographers are currently interested in. It really is down to us to make sure that those materials inspire a, a new generation of geographers. Um, you know, that's a very trite conclusion. Geography matters. We've all seen that lots of times, haven't we? But you know, this morning, above all. Um, you know, sovereignty, migration. Um, these, are, these are key issues. I mean, drought, flooding, climate change, identity. This stuff is in the newspaper every day of the week. Um, and so and these, these are areas that really are core to quite large parts of the new A level. So hopefully that means we have the ability to, to deliver them in a really engaging way and, and to engage um, six form geographers. Okay, I'm going to stop. Please take any questions. Or not. It's just like fresh and Sorry. That changing place resource, sorry, where did you say that was coming in? So the, the GA has a series of publications that they call Top Spec Geography. Um, and there are quite a lot of them that cover previous specs and, and 
you know, all the ones I've seen are good, and some of the pre-existing ones might be useful as well, but the brand new one um, is changing places. So Alistair Owens is a human drug for Queen Mary, who was on the other panel. Simon Oakes is a chief examiner for um, IB, I think, is involved in the review. Some of you have probably met him at training events and so on. There's a third author who escapes me, but you know, they're all good people. I think it, I would expect, given the series is good and the authors are good, that there's probably some useful stuff in there. What I'll do, and I'll check out the copyright, if possible, I'll try and link them from the site, and we'll put the resources on today, if I'm legally allowed to. Well, we should be able to link at least to the GA, because the GA has a sales site um, okay. where, where it's selling these things. So. Yeah, I'll put that all in the same place. Yeah. Hi, Martin. From, I'm from MIE, doing the job for PGC for Teacher First Street and Rindemann. I'm just thinking that this is going to reflect as well on teacher education. So subject knowledge audits, et cetera, that departments are hanging on to need to be updated to reflect the spec changes that are coming for up to A-level standard. Yeah. Especially at a time where PGCE courses are recruiting graduates which don't have geography degrees yeah. and we're accepting people with just A-level degree. Yeah, I mean, clearly, clearly that's an issue. On the flip side, um, one way of thinking about the introduction of things like changing places is that you know, when we're struggling to recruit geographers to teach geography, having the stuff that might have excited them at university come in spec and um, something that they can go on to teach, you know, at the margin that might help. I know people that know much more about this than I do have, have kind of made the point that sometimes you know, teachers come in, look at the other spec and go, well, this is not what I did at university. Um, so, yeah, I agree. Clearly, that's why we have to do lots of this. Yeah. Um, but you know, perhaps it will help a bit in the longer term. Yeah.